week, Sherry Clark talks to us about eating and living naturally, Jason. And she talks about people usually, too, yes. to, to bipedal uh, animals, but mm -hmm. this time it's different. We have a chance to introduce you to a very special member of her family, and if you're a pet owner, you're going to want to pay attention. Hey everybody, I'm here with Sherry Clark, of course, with Fork in the Road. Now, we want to show everybody what you talk about, which is usually how to integrate, you know, healthy choices and things we eat on a daily basis. Uh, there's other ways that we can find fulfillment in our lives besides food. And we're here to talk about one that involves a furry friend. <laughs> we're here to talk about pets, and pets are really an important part of a healthy lifestyle. A lot of us find um, stress release and uh, companionship in, in companion animals. And I brought my cat, Lotus, to hear here today to talk a little bit about what's going on. So okay. would you like to meet Lotus? Yes, I would love to meet Lotus. Well, first of all, this carrier is fantastic. Isn't this awesome? I love this thing. I bought this when Lotus was a kitten and I wanted to have something that would serve two purposes. What it does is it's a carrier. And right. we've all, we all have to have those to go to the vet and whatnot. This also serves as a bed and let me show you something about this. One, we can open it so that Lotus can be, can, <laughs> Hello, can Lotus. be seen, Hello. but also then we can also lift off the top. Oh, it's like a bed. And it becomes a bed and then Lotus can you know use it as, as he sees oh, wow. fit and whatnot but it's it's really wonderful for that purpose I leave it out and then it's not intimidating oh, because that. part of the thing about the carriers is they see it and they know that something's gonna happen right so where would you find something like that um, if you were to look at the local pet stores okay. rather than the chains can oftentimes order us things and, and that this is called a sleepy pod and I think this this is a this is a oh, great one yeah. they come in different sizes and it's a great colors. idea yeah all right so what else uh, do we need for our pets to make sure everyone's in a well good when you've place. got a cat like Lotus I have chosen not to declaw so okay. I have um, purchased a, a scratching post and this is the scratching post that I really like it's kind of like a piece of furniture and you can see that he uses it it's really comfortable he lays on it and he just he, he'll just go in and, and every time I catch him doing something that I don't want him to do I take him and I set it on that I'm not big into discipline like punitive I don't um, when I, when cats are pretty easy to housebreak they pretty right. much come that way but rather than punishing, I reward for good behavior. So when he's using that, I pet him. Okay. Oh, I love this, how it looks like a piece of furniture. Like it yeah. almost like an art piece. It does, exactly. Yep. So let's talk. You mentioned you about nutrition. That's yes. really, to me, the key and the, the most important thing that we can do for our pets. And so Lotus, when I start talking about food, <laughs> Lotus wants to come back. <laughs> Many of us have, have seen um, some inexpensive cat food. Yeah, you always see the cheap pet food brand in the can. And always it's, sitting right there. It's tempting. It's tempting to do that. This is 59 cents for a big can. It says on the outside, fish flavor cat food, which already starts to scare me. Mm -hmm. Then when you start reading the ingredients, we've got chicken, first ingredient in fish cat food is chicken, okay. <laughs> Water sufficient for processing, chicken byproducts, corn, all kinds of things that I really don't really wanna be feeding my pet. So I choose to go with a little bit of a higher end food. I also feed Lotus some raw foods. So it's really important to remember, his coat, his behavior, his demeanor, and his future health depends on what I feed him. So that's really, really important. Right, so we want them around as long as uh, possible. Are there certain things we should watch out for? Like if we see that certain ingredient and be like, mm, the whole byproduct not. thing bothers me because okay. byproducts, what they are is the, is the remnants on the slaughterhouse floor and all those kinds of things. Corn is not something that a cat would typically eat in the wild. So other things, sometimes um, carrageenan, some other preservatives. If the list is this long, just like with humans, right. if the list is that long, I would probably avoid it. Okay, good to know. All right, so other ways to make our pets happy. Entertainment. Entertainment. And maybe we can get Lotus to come back and play with a toy. Who knows? Um, one of the things that I really like to do is encourage people to get toys that are interactive so that they can be, they can use the play, have play time with their pets so that they can do things together. So this would be an example of that. And you can see <laughs> Lotus. He's like, I'm on TV. I'm not going to show off. <laughs> he's, he's really amused by this. You can see. The other thing about it is to be careful about toys. There are toys that are not safe, and this oh. is an example of one. Okay. This, this one, this is a sparkle ball. Lotus plays with it, and I let him play with it when I'm around, but here's why I don't. It can you come can off. pull off these pieces, and if Lotus eats that, it's not going to be a pleasant experience for either one of us. Okay. So I want to make sure that I'm buying toys that are safe. The other thing is, because I'm gone a bit, when I am not going to be home, 
I leave this out. Oh, there you go. And so this is a toy that Lotus can play with when I'm not here. So he can he can play he plays with this, but he's he's he wants you to. Play I know. With him. He's like I'm digging the fish now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so he can play with that by himself and whatnot. So we'll have a variety of toys and a lot of things, and be thoughtful about the things that you buy and use, and keep them clean. Okay. You know, they get soiled or whatever, and right. just wipe them down. Okay. Next thing is grooming. Oh yes. Now, Especially with long hair like Lotus has. Lotus is a Maine Coon, and a Maine okay. Coon is a long-haired cat. The important thing to remember is this, particularly with any long-haired animals, we need to keep them detangled, and the way to keep them detangled is to use the proper equipment. This is a long comb with some long tines to it. It will go through his hair easily. A comb that's with shorter tines <laughs> or a brush won't be, do as good a job as detangling, because the worst thing about it, in addition to I want him to look nice, if an animal gets mats in their fur, it pulls on their skin. Let's right. think about snarls in our own hair, what yeah. that would feel like when you're trying to pull it out. Well, if every time you try to move, you've got an armpit hair right. that's all in a wad, it's not going to feel real good. Right, makes sense. So know your pet and know what kind of grooming they need it exactly. on a regular basis. If you're going to take them to the groomer and they get a little bit nervous, um, right. I like to do some different things. I have two different things that I use for Lotus if he's going to get nervous. Um, one is a, an essential oil. Lavender is the one that's appropriate for cats really? and dogs. Yeah, just so like how, how would you implement that? What I do is I take one or two drops and I rub it on my hands and then I let it dissipate for a little bit. I don't go right for him immediately and then I'll just pet him, just like lightly rub it oh. through his hair. If the cat or dog doesn't like the oil, then don't use it and make sure you do a little research. There are some things like, for example, with cats, um, uh, citrus oil is not appropriate. They oh. don't like orange and lemon and lime. Okay, so you, know. you'd want to know that. And there are also some oils that are toxic to animals. So before you just go out and start doing essential oils, let's be cautious about okay. that. And then this is um, an, it's a, a rescue remedy. It's a flower essence. And it's something that you just, for people, we put it under our tongues. My version for, for us, for people, has alcohol in it. Okay. The one for animals and for, um, for children is tinctured with glycerin. So it's, oh. there's no alcohol in it. And he really enjoys that. And it calms him down. So Wow. Lots of things to know about. And where pets. would you find something like this? At a, a natural food store, at a pet store. They would carry something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. Wow. So there are lots of ways to keep our companion animals happy. Um, I think the important thing to, to do is to just be mindful. The things that matter to us and our health are the same things that matter for them. Right. Makes sense. Great advice. Besides just you know making better steps in your life to eat healthier, there's other things you can do to make you happy and make your life complete. Well, yes. thank you, Sherry Clark, very much. If people want more information, where can they go? They would go to www. Dash road.com and I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. Perfect. And enjoy your pets. Get out there, enjoy your pets, and pamper them with some new gifts out there as well. We'll be right back with more on Great Day.